Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for this workshop, Discover the Six Secrets to Finding and Getting Your Student into Their Right Fit College, Picking Their Right Fit Major, and Saving a Boatload of Time, Money, and Stress Along the Way. Now, before we get started, I'm going to make an assumption that you're probably like most parents and children that show up to this training. You'd love to be able to win the college planning game, but you just aren't sure how because you really don't know what the rules of the game actually are. So when you don't know the rules of the game, the majority of parents and students, they unfortunately lose. They end up with an unhappy college experience, a ton of unnecessary stress, and they spend tens and tens of thousands of dollars more than they necessarily had to, which is why 72% of the people who finish college nowadays are not working in their chosen major and they're ending up with a ton of student debt. And I'm here to tell you that that does not have to be you. And most importantly, we believe that it's not going to be you simply because you took the initiative to show up for this training. So you've already increased your chances of getting your child into the right fit college specifically for them picking the right fit major that they'll stick with and actually be happy with, increasing their chances of getting in and graduating in four years, having your child be a happy and productive part of society with a prosperous future ahead of them and off of mom and dad's payroll, and lowering your out-of-pocket costs by tens of thousands of dollars. And just a little PS, our average family that we work with saves $19,075 per year off the retail price of college. So kudos to you. Now, just a little results disclaimer. So we help increase student happiness and four-year graduation success rates, which ultimately ends up leading to better, higher-paying jobs, overall life satisfaction, while taking the stress of the college planning process off of families' plates. And like I mentioned before, the average family that we work with receives $19,075 per year per student in some sort of aid. But I got to stress that you know it's illegal for anyone to guarantee a specific amount of college aid. So we, we definitely do do not do that. And just an important note, there's absolutely nothing to buy on this training. Okay, this is your time to focus, learn. So take notes and really dig into this information. At the end, I'll offer you a way to go deeper, which a large percentage of you will want to do. But if you don't want to do it, you're still going to get a ton of great information out of this training. So hopefully that seems fair to you. Now, before we get going, how did Madeline, this is a student that we worked with, her parents were super anxious about what path she was going to go down. How did she end up finding clarity on a major and a school and get in and out of Northeastern in four years? Or Andrew, he's a student that we also worked with. He was completely lost with what he wanted to do, where he wanted to go. How did he gain clarity, find and get into his top choice school, which was Marquette, and get $93,000 to go there? Or Julia, She's a student that we worked with that didn't think she was going to be able to get into her top choice school, right? She knew what her top choice school was, but thought she had no chance of getting in. But how did she get in and also get $60,000 given to her to attend as well as an offer to play soccer, which she really wanted to do? So I'm definitely going to be covering all of this in just a bit. But first, who is this actually for? Who, who is this workshop for? Well, it's for parents who are determined to make smart choices on their student's college planning journey. They don't want their student to end up in the wrong major, at the wrong school, and ultimately spend tens of thousands of dollars more for college than they need to, which is common nowadays. It's very common. Most kids are taking, and we'll dig into this in a little bit, but they're taking five to six years to get an undergraduate degree, which obviously costs families tens and tens of thousands of additional dollars that they didn't have have to spend. Um, parents interested in helping their student find the right fit school for them and the right fit major as well. And, and, and right fit, we talk, I'll talk about that a lot. What that means is, is finding what will meet that specific student's, their, their own unique individual needs, and make everyone happy with the overall college experience and their life post-college. It's also for parents who are just looking to lower their out-of-pocket college costs so that they don't overpay for college like so many parents unfortunately do and simplify this absolute nightmare of a process. So maybe you can relate. Do you feel overwhelmed by the complexity of the college planning process? Are you maybe experiencing sticker shock now that you're here? You know, you've got a child in high school and you're scared to death about how you're going to be able to pay for all this. Are you confused about how to even get started in the college planning process? 
process? Are you anxious that your student doesn't have a clue what they want to do or where they want to go? You know, they bounce around from week to week with what they want to do or where they want to go. At the end of the day, they're clueless. You know, do you want to get your child into their school of choice and keep your costs as low as possible, but you're just not sure how to do that? Or maybe, maybe you make good money and you've got all the money saved for college, but you're still looking to lower your out-of-pocket costs and maximize the return on investment of your college spending. Now, we could probably both agree that you're a fairly intelligent person, but, and the big but there is that you still most likely have a very limited understanding on how to actually navigate through this nightmare of a process, pick the right fit school, the right fit major, increase your chances of getting in, and keep your out-of-pocket costs as low as possible for your specific situation. So who is this actually for? Well, if any or all, for some of you, of the previous statements apply to you, then the good news is you're definitely in the right place. Now, my goal for this training is twofold. I want you to understand that number one, the only way for you to truly succeed in the college process is by first understanding the common pitfalls of the process. And number two, the only way to understand the common pitfalls of the process is through an education of what those pitfalls actually are and what you could do about them. So today I'm going to promise you two things, right? The first thing is an education of those pitfalls that so many families fall victim to, which cause students to be miserable in college, taking five or six years to graduate and cost parents tens of thousands of dollars more than necessary. And number two, a proven solution on how you could avoid these devastating pitfalls so that you could have a successful college planning journey, one where your student picks and gets into the right fit school with the right fit major, they're super happy, you're super happy, and you save tens of thousands of dollars off the retail price of college. Now, just a word of caution before I get into the meat of this thing, right? If you don't pay attention and you don't really focus here, you could end up literally crushing your child's dream by telling him or her that you simply can't afford to send them to the college they work so hard to get into. You might find out in a year that you're just too late and what you and your students should have done months or years earlier to optimize their chance of getting into their top choice school, it's just passed by. Or you could overspend by, for college by tens, if not hundreds, literally hundreds, and I'm gonna get into that in a little bit, of thousands of dollars and delay your retirement for years, if ever, and put yourself in a really, really bad financial position. So I really strongly urge you to pay close attention to what I'm gonna go through because this is one of the biggest financial and emotional expenditures you're gonna make in your lifetime. So it really pays to pay attention. Now, just a little background uh, before we get into this. College Planning Network, we've helped over 20,250 families successfully send their children to college and make paying for more easily affordable. We were ranked the number one college financial aid expert worth knowing about in the entire country. We've become the go-to college financial expert for countless media sources, Huffington Post, CNN Money, USA Today, Smart Money, many, many more. We have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, a 4.95 out of five-star rating. And I'm not telling you all this to toot our own horn. I'm telling you this just so you understand that we have been around the block for a long time. We've seen it all. We've been through it all. So we really know how this process works and what it takes to be successful in it, which I'm going to cover today. But before I get into all of that, let me just backtrack and just talk real quickly how this all started so you kind of get a feel of where this came from. So back in 1992, one of the co-founders of College Planning Network, Brian, he was, at, he was enrolled at uh, Cornell University in New York, and many of his friends were dropping out of college after only two years. Some of them didn't pick the right major, so they just simply lost interest. Um, some just could no longer afford college, and some felt that they just were spending their parents' money without a good reason. They had no idea why they were there. They had no idea what they were learning, so they dropped out. And his friends friends had invested two years of their lives. They spent tens of thousands of dollars and they were now unhappy. They were lost. They were working low paying jobs without any signs of a bright future. And Brian loved his friends. So he obviously wanted to help them stay in college and not drop out. And he knew there had to be a better way to attend and pay for college that wasn't going to leave his friends in debt, that they could complete college in four years and that they would be happy with their college experience and with life post-college, right? But he had a problem, and, and that was that he wanted to help his friends. He's a nice guy, but he had literally zero idea on how to actually do it. So wanting to solve this problem is what started this journey back in 1992, but, and, he, and he started that journey full of the highest expectations until he discovered the reality of the current system, right? And he quickly realized that the college system was set up to extract the maximum amount of money from each family and that colleges didn't really care if the student was in the right fit major or school for them. They didn't necessarily care if the student would be happy with their future career, which is a career that aligns with their natural gifts and talents, which I'll talk about in just a bit. 
But in reality, he found that the schools would gladly keep students in college as long as they kept paying. And furthermore, their ultimate goal was to get the students that they wanted to attend their school and give those families the least amount of money that they thought they would take to still get them to attend, right? So that's what he found. And his journey revealed some bad news, and these things still haven't really changed. 64% of students in a four-year college program take 5.8 years to get a four-year undergraduate degree. 72% of people do not work in their chosen college major. The average high school guidance counselor has 482 students and spends 15 minutes per year with a student. And the average family overpays for college simply because they didn't know the pathway to not overpaying, right? Which I'm going to cover today. But the journey also revealed some good news. So 74% of job offerings require a college degree. The highest paying jobs still require a college degree. College graduates have 50% less unemployment than those without a degree. And college graduates have much better job conditions and career fulfillment than those without a degree. So today, the average four-year college graduate salary in 2018 was $50,390. So it's not all doom and gloom. There's plenty of opportunity for your child to succeed and thrive. So the epiphany from all of this was that there is a college system that if people go through it the right way, it can give them a much greater shot at having a happier life and making more money. But that same system confuses people. It sets them up for possible failure and wants them to stay in the system for as long as they're willing to pay without any consideration of their future happiness or their parents' pocketbook. So something had to be done. And hence, our original company was started in 1994, which birthed one of the very first pioneers of the college funding industry. And because of that epiphany, we created an extremely successful system where with the right types of families, we can nearly eliminate the possibility of not succeeding in the college journey. And since then, we're proud to say we've served well over 20,000 families. And to do this all for family, it's not cheap. We had to hire professionals, student counselors, perf- you know, personal client concierges, financial aid experts, appeals experts, admission experts, develop software, build algorithms, have high-end help desks. You know, we needed an operational leadership team in place. And none of that's free and it's not cheap either. But we knew that if qualified families follow the process properly, they would end up picking the right fit major at the right fit school and save an average of $19,075 per year off the sticker price of their college investment. And most loved the idea, but some were still afraid that they would not get a favorable return on investment. And then we discovered why. And it's because these families had simply not learned the secrets that I'm about to share, nor did they understand that if they had a three-part system that actually worked, they could win the college game. They could get their children into the right fit school with the right fit major and save a ton of time, money, and headaches along the way. So once you learn these secrets, your student will know exactly what the right fit major in school is for them, which significantly increases their chances of graduating in four years instead of the nationwide average of 5.8 years. Your student will know what career path makes the most sense for them and that they'll thrive in. And they, as well as mom and dad, are no longer going to worry if they're making a sound choice about their future. And you'll know how to best position your student to not only increase their chances of getting into the right fit school, but also how to receive the maximum amount of money from the school. You'll know how to navigate the financial aid process to maximize the amount of money you get and lower your out-of-pocket expenses by thousands and thousands of dollars. You'll learn how to negotiate with colleges to actually get them to increase their original offer and award you more money. And you'll eliminate all of the household drama all of that drama between parent and student and be able to navigate smoothly through the college planning process with significantly less stress and anxiety. So please remember this before I get into the meat of this. The college planning game is one that can be won. You simply have to follow a time-tested proven roadmap that's worked for years on how to pick the right fit school and major, how to graduate in four years instead of five or six, and save tens of thousands of dollars off the retail price of college. And after seeing this process for the past 25 plus years, we've seen it all and we've discovered all of this the hard way, but... The good news is, is that you don't have to, right? You could choose the easy way if you so choose. So the questions parents typically want answers to when we do these trainings is, one, how do we pick the right fit major in college that's really best for my individual specific student? How do we package our student so that he or she stands out from others and the right fit college picks my student? 
and how do we pay the lowest possible cost for it? So I'm going to show you the answers to those questions, right? So college planning success, in simplest terms, it's all about knowing and implementing a proven process for success. So what you need to know is that there are six secrets that you must know in order to successfully navigate through this and get the best results. And if you didn't know this and you've been stressed out, you've been anxious about the process, you've been struggling trying to make heads or tails of all of this, there is a reason why. And it's it's because you don't yet understand what these six secrets are. So again, we, do, we talked about Madeline at the beginning. How did Madeline, that student we worked with whose parents were super anxious about what path she would go down, how did she end up finding clarity on a major and a school and get in and out of Northeastern in four years? And that's secret number one, which is that students must follow their own inner voice and match their unique attributes to a major and a career path that best suits them. So again, a student must align with their inner voice and uniqueness. They have to become aligned with what naturally and truly motivates them. When they pursue something that doesn't match their own uniqueness and their own inner voice, what happens is they eventually face resistance and they change direction. And that's why so many students take five or six years to get a four-year undergraduate degree. They pick the wrong school and the wrong major for the wrong reasons, and they don't realize it until it's too late. So They need to pick the right school and the right major, but it needs to be for the right reasons or else it will lead to disastrous results in this process. And by disastrous results, I mean an unhappy student, unhappy parents, and tens, if not hundreds of thousands of unnecessary dollars spent. So they need to find what really excites them as that's when they'll be successful in picking the right college, the right major, and the right career path and get in and out in four years instead of taking 5.8 years like so many kids do. And in terms of avoiding what most kids do, here's what most kids do, right? So most students are so lost in this process, so they pick a major for the wrong reason. So maybe they heard a teacher mention that they should consider majoring in economics, right? Or maybe someone told them that they think they'd make a good attorney. Or they saw, they saw the movie, uh, you know, The Accountant, and they thought it'd be cool to be an accountant, right? So somebody's brother's a little older, and maybe they're making good money as an investment banker. So maybe they decide they want to go into investment banking. Or mom and dad are trying, they, you know, they love their kids, they're trying, so they try to offer help. But most of the time, if they're truly honest with themselves, mom and dad are just guessing as much as their student is. And on top of that, when mom and dad get involved, now it's perceived as nagging and the students completely shut down. Although I'm sure that isn't you, right? <laughs> so anyways, uh, I want to walk through an example, a family business example. So Jimmy, right? Jimmy had deep-rooted family beliefs that he was going to go into the family business. He grew up thinking that he was going into the family business because that's all he ever knew from his family. His grandpa started it, his dad, his brothers, two sisters, they all worked in the business and it was just believed that Jimmy would too. So he chose a major based on that belief that he was going into the family business and he wasn't honest with his own inner voice. And what happened was it ultimately caused massive stress anxiety, anger, animosity. He skipped classes, he partied too hard, and he finally decided to be honest with himself and his family that he didn't want to go into the family business and he absolutely hated his major. So he ended up switching majors to one that better suited what he actually wanted to do, but ultimately it took him two extra years and it cost his parents over $50,000 more than it had to. So the moral of this story is that the student must must, must, must get aligned with who they are and what makes them tick now. They can't do it once they're already in college, which is what happens with so many students. And that's why kids take so long to graduate college and why they oftentimes will drop out. So I can't stress enough how important it is for them to get aligned with this up front, not after it's too late. So moving on to the next secret. So I used the example at the beginning about Andrew, who was a student we worked with, was completely lost with where he wanted to go, what he wanted to do. How did he gain clarity, find and get into his top choice school, which ended up being Marquette, and receive $93,000 to go there. So the second secret is that finding the right fit school is directly tied to a happy college experience, as well as keeping your costs down. So maybe you're terrified that you somehow need to find the single perfect college for your student from more than 4,700 colleges and universities in the United States. Now, if your students, like most high school students going through the college search, you want them to get into the best school for them, right? But too often, best means most selective. 
instead of a place where they're actually going to thrive both academically and socially while setting themselves up for a successful post-college life. So finding colleges that are truly the right fit may mean rejecting conventional wisdom of what a, a good school is or a popular school or a school that simply validates your ego. So it may mean disregarding things such as whether or not mom and dad went there, if it's an Ivy League school, if they've got a championship football team. And it also helps if you could set aside any financial concerns or affordability judgments for a moment and instead try to get a feel for the college's personality and how it meshes with who the student is and what they really want. And many times the quote unquote pricier schools that people sometimes shy away from can often cost the family far less money if they go through this process the right way. So I'm going to go into that in a little bit, but don't shy away from schools that you think are going to be a good fit just because they have a high price tag. Because again, if you do this right, oftentimes those schools will end up costing you less money out of pocket. So what makes a right fit college? A right fit college is a place where your student can be truly comfortable being themselves, but they're also challenged to become their best self. They have independence to build the community and find people to talk with late into the night. They have opportunities to study things that truly fascinate them, play the sports they want to play, work at the internships they want to you know, use to help clarify their career plans, and join the clubs that they want to join. They learn how to learn, right? They learn how to communicate and solve problems, which are skills that all employers want to see no matter what industry you're going into. So again, a student has to have clear self-awareness and confidence as to who they are and what they really want in order to find the right fit school for their specific needs. Putting the work in up front on this to figure this out will not only lead to a much, much happier college experience and a much happier student, but it'll also typically save you one to two years of unnecessary college costs, which could be 50, 60, 70, 100 plus thousand dollars, right? So not doing this right up front can lead to disastrous results. And every little detail matters from how far away from home they want to be, to class size, to culture. Do they want a big school, small school? I mean, there's so many things that go into this, but the work has to be done up front. They can't do what you know, we talked about in terms of picking the right major, what students normally do there, all the mistakes they made. Same thing for schools. Kids will just be like, oh, this, I heard this school's cool, so maybe I'll go there. I, you know, Jimmy goes there. He seemed to like it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go there. This one's kind of close. You know, they picked the school for the wrong reason. So, again, I can't stress enough how important it is to do this legwork up front because not only will everyone be so much happier, have, have such a more successful experience in college and post-college, but you're going to save a lot of money, too, along the way. So moving on to the next secret, it solves the question of how do I increase my chance of actually getting into the right fit school, right? So now I found out what my right fit major is, found out my right fit school, that's all well and good, but how do I increase my chances of actually getting into the school, right? So this is about Julia, the example I used at the beginning that uh, she's a student we work with that, you know, she had her right fit major, she had her right fit school, but she thought there was no chance of her getting in. So how did she not only get in, but also get $60,000 awarded to her to go there and an offer to play soccer, which she really wanted to do, which is secret number three. And that's your students' chances of getting in and maximizing merit-based aid is largely based on how they package and present themselves to their right fit schools. Okay, Packaging the student for success is so, so important. So think of it like you're staging your house to be sold or you're going out on a first date. You're single, you're going out on a first date. So what would you do to your house before you put it on the market? Would you leave pizza boxes lying around or would you, would, you, would you clean it up like the cleanest it's ever been, You know, paint what needed to be painted, and try to get the highest price for that house? Same thing, if you're single and you're going out on a first date, you know, you're, you're probably going to show up looking your best, acting your best, being on the best behavior. You know, you're presenting yourself in the best light possible. It's no different for college. The student has to package themselves for success so that they stand out and the school really wants them. The school really feels they're going to be a great asset to the school. So how can a student best package themselves? So they need to look as good as possible on paper. So they want to make sure their SAT and ACT scores are as high as they possibly can be. They want to be able to build their brag sheet and resume to showcase their abilities. They'll want to practice their interviewing skills. Some schools allow for an interview with the admissions department, and if the student does a just killer job at that interview, well, now they're going to be remembered. The admissions department is going to remember them now instead of them just being another number on an application. You know, any leadership roles that they take on in any kind of clubs or sports or activities they're involved in. Um, 
learning to articulate their uniqueness and hook. Again, how do they stand out? How, how are they going to stand out in the pool of thousands and thousands of applications that the um, admissions department is sifting through? How do you make sure their admission essay really makes them stand out, right? That's one of the only opportunities they have to make themselves stand out. You know, how do you know which admission decision would be best to present itself to the school for you know that family specific situation because you know some of them may may help your chances of getting in but hurt you for financial aid and vice versa so you know all these things um, are things that could help when you're trying to package a student to increase their chance of getting in you can't just blindly go through it just because you found the right major in the right college that's amazing that's great that's far better than most people do but you now you got to package yourself to try to actually get into the school. And not only get in, but get the most money possible from the school. So moving on to secret number four, which is a biggie. And this is that you need to understand the inner workings of how the college money game is played. Because, you know, you picked your right fit major, you picked the right fit college, you, you increased your chances of getting in, you got into the school. Now it's about the money, right? How, you know, how the inner workings of the college money game is played. So as you can see here, the reality of college costs is that they've been skyrocketing. You don't need me to tell you that. Everyone knows that it's far more expensive now than when we went to college years ago, right? So how do I navigate the financial aid process and maximize the amount of money that I receive. The less you spend on college, obviously, the more money you have for yourself, for retirement, for fun stuff, you know, vacations, dinners out, jet skis, helping your kids post-college, whatever else floats your boat. Most people want their kid to get the best education and they want to pay the least amount possible to get it, right? They, they don't want to pay the most amount possible. They want to pay the least amount to get them the best education. So the less you could spend on college, the more you have for whatever else you want. There's the foreign language of college planning. It's so complex. The FAFSA, CSS profile, EFC, SAR, SOS. <laughs> um, you know, just remember, don't feel bad. I know I've covered a lot of new stuff tonight that, you know, at, at this, in this training that, you know, no one's ever trained you to be an expert in this, right? So it's not your fault that you don't know all of it and that the thought of it probably gives you migraines. So, you know, that's, that's very normal. So don't, don't, don't uh, feel bad about that. So I want to walk you through an example. This is a client of ours, Larry, and this was back, oh man, this was probably back in 2004, right? He had twins. He had one going to Kenyon, one going to Harvard, two really, really bright kids. How did he pay under $10,000 a year to send both of his kids to schools that cost well over a hundred thousand dollars a year, even though he had substantial savings. Okay, and that comes down to the college aid system and myths versus reality. So a lot of misconceptions out there. A lot of people think my income's too high. I'm never going to get money for college, and your income may be too high for need-based financial aid. That could be true, although the threshold for need-based financial aid, depending on the schools you're looking at and depending on how many kids you have, is still pretty high. But you know, let's say you make way too much money to get any kind of need-based aid, there's still many things that you could do to save thousands and thousands of dollars off your college costs. It is not just about need-based aid. So my income is too high is a fallacy. Um, I have savings, so I won't get any money. Absolutely not true. Now, look, if you have savings and you don't know what you're doing, yes, that's going to count against you. But there's many things that you could do to protect the money that you've saved from counting against you. Um, a lot of people think I own a home, so I'm not going to get any money. It's not true. You know, a big percentage of the schools don't even ask about your house. And the ones that do, there's things you could do to protect the equity so that it doesn't count against you. A lot of people think, you know, maybe I own a business, so I'm definitely not going to get any money. Completely false. Uh, you know, business owners, sometimes they have the most options for what they could do to lower their college costs. There's so many things that business owners can do to shave thousands and thousands of dollars off their, off their um, college costs. Aid is only for special groups. That's absolutely not true. And a lot of people think the schools will help me, right? And like I said before, there's the high schools and the colleges. And a lot of people, you know, the high schools, like I said, the statistics are over 400 students per guidance counselor. So, you know, they spend 15 minutes on average a year with a student. They just don't have the manpower. You know, they, they love to be able to help, but, you know, A, they're not experts in the entire process, and B, they just don't have the time. So what a lot of families do, people who go through this blindly, is they just go to the college financial aid office, and they'll go over, they'll, they'll give them all their information. They'll say, you know, we, you know, Jimmy really wants to go here. What can you do for me? And the question I always pose is, how many people watching this take their taxes to the IRS each year and have them fill them out for you? Probably nobody, right? So, you know, you got to remember these colleges are, you know, 
it's one of the most profitable, if not the most profitable nonprofit sector in the entire country. They didn't build these massive campuses and build up billion dollar endowments by just giving out their money freely like it's Christmas, right? So remember, the college's goal is this. Their goal is to get the kids that they really want to attend their school to, a, to choose the school, but they want to give them the least amount that they think they're going to take, that they think they'd accept to actually go. And your MO in this as mom and dad is that you want your son and daughter to get into the absolute best school possible, but you want to pay the least amount possible to go there. So there's this, what, they, what we call the wedge, right? There's the wedge between what you want and what they want. And that's where knowing how to navigate through this and, and, and through the whole process and the money game is where families save so much money in this process, right? And then a lot of people think, okay, well, my, maybe my CPA will help or my financial guy will help. And I mean, we've worked with tons of CPAs throughout the years. We, we have a lot of CPAs as clients. A lot of CPAs refer their clients to us. We teach CPAs on this topic. They're the first to admit this is not what they do. Yeah, sure, they could fill out a form for you if you wanted to. And your financial guy, if, if you've got a five-year-old, they could help you save for college, although you know, it might be in the wrong place that counts against you. But you know, they're not experts in the this entire college planning process and how to truly maximize your results in this. So again, a lot of misconceptions out there about what families can do. So how do they actually determine if I'm eligible? So this is the formula they basically use for need-based aid, and it's the cost of attendance. And the cost of attendance is everything included, tuition, meal plans, room and board, transportation costs, lab fees, all in, right, the cost of attendance, minus what's known as your expected family contribution. And that's the number that comes when you complete the FAFSA form, and it's largely based on income and assets, but there's many things that, that are part of it. And the difference is need. So let's say a cost, your, the cost of attendance of a school was $30,000 and your family contribution was $20,000. That means you're eligible for $10,000 of need that year, right? But let's say there was something you could do where instead of your family contribution being $20,000, your family contribution was now $10,000. That means that your need, instead of your need being $10,000, your need got increased to $20,000. So that's a $10,000 difference that year, which over four years is a potential savings of $40,000. So you absolutely want your family contribution, your expected family contribution, your EFC, to be as low as legally possible for your specific situation. Now, there's three categories of people. You're, you're definitely going to fall into one of these three buckets. The first category are families that their income and assets are so low that they'll qualify for need-based aid regardless of what schools they're looking at. It's just a matter of picking the right schools that actually give them a high percentage of that, right? So some of those schools may not give them the money even though they're eligible for it. Then there's a second category family, and these are the families that depending on how they navigate through this process and how everything's done, they're either going to get a lot of money, some money, or next to nothing, Okay, and I know that sounds vague, but that's just the reality of it. And this is the majority of people that end up watching these trainings. They fall into category two. Okay, they're the people that depending on how they do this, they're either going to get a lot, some, or nothing. Okay, that's the majority of people we've seen throughout the years at these trainings. Then there's the third category. Okay, and we definitely get a lot of these people too, but the, you know, the third category are, are, are the families that they make way too much money. They're never getting need-based financial aid. You know, they're seven-figure income earners. They're not getting need-based financial aid, but there's still many, many things that they could do to shave thousands of dollars off their college costs. It's not just about need-based aid, okay? So, and, I, and on the topic of need-based aid, I want you to also remember that need is not always for the neediest in the college system, okay? More often it ends up being for the wisest. And whether that's right or wrong, that's just the reality of how the system works. It's not necessarily the one that needs it the most, it's the one that understands how this process really works, who gets the most money for, in terms of need-based aid. Now I wanna walk you through a, a brief example here of a cheap versus expensive school and why you don't wanna judge a book by its cover, right? So let's look at a state school. $30,000 cost of attendance, the family contribution was $20,000, so the need there is the difference. It's $10,000. But let's say that state school meets 50% of the need, right? So 50% of $10,000 is $5,000. That also means they're not going to meet the other 50%, which is $5,000. So now, to go to this school, you're going to pay the $20,000 family contribution plus the $5,000 in unmet need. You're going to pay $25,000 to go to this $30,000 school. Or... 
look at the expensive private school, $70,000 cost of attendance. Mom and dad have been shying away from it because they're like, you know, we can't even afford 30. We're going to pay 70. Okay. So after this, I want you to keep an open mind. So, uh, you know, kind of follow me here. So the the cost of attendance is 70,000, but your family contribution was the same regardless of where you went. So your family contribution is still $20,000. The only difference is that now you're eligible for $50,000 of need. And if that school meets 100% of need, which a lot of these pricey private schools do, they're going to give you that 50 grand. And now you're only paying your $20,000 family contribution to go there. So you're paying $20,000 to go to the $70,000 school versus $25,000 to go to the $30,000 school. It makes absolutely no sense, but that is how this process works. So I always tell people, do not judge a school based on the sticker price, okay? You know, if a state school is better for your student and we find that that's the right fit school for them, perfect. But if a right fit school for your student is a smaller private school that has a high sticker price, don't shy away from that because it may, if you go through this process the right way, end up costing you the same, if not less, than your local state school. So now there's the financial aid forms, and these have been an absolute nightmare for families for years that even minor errors can have massive consequences that cost you thousands and thousands of dollars. So the FAFSA form, um, a significant percentage going with errors or inconsistencies, you have to complete the form to get money. Even if you're not eligible for need-based aid, a lot of schools still require you to fill it out to get their other money. 1,100 pages of regulations make up the FAFSA, and they switch to a prior, prior period, which means that they look back that much earlier. So now you got to start your planning that much earlier. And believe it or not, we <laughs> a lot of families think they have so much more time to do this than they, than they really do. The best time to start this is in ninth grade. Okay, ninth grade is the best time not to start the FAFSA process, but to start the college planning process is in ninth grade. So if you have a 10th or 11th grader, it's not that there's nothing you could do. There's still absolutely things you could do. But ideally, you would have gotten started with this in ninth grade. Right. Then there's a CSS profile that makes the FAFSA actually look easy, believe it or not. Um, And it counts far more things against you. It counts your home equity against you. If you have unusual medical expenses, they count far more against you. Then there's forms if you you know you own a business, um, if you own a farm. There's there's forms for that. So again, they make the administrative part of this process an absolute nightmare. Right? They make it a complete pain for people. Um, So keep in mind, and and I said this before, that the college money game is not just about need based financial aid. There's a ton of other strategies that families can use to lower their out-of-pocket costs, regardless of how much money they make or how much money they have saved. So moving on to secret five, and secret number five is if you don't know how or what to ask, you'll never receive it. And I want to talk about a client of ours, uh, the student's name was Jade. Student we work with get an original offer from Duke for $12,625 that we were able to appeal and get them $64,600. That's a $51,975 per year increase. Yes, that is over $200,000 saved over four years. Okay, over $200,000 saved over four years. So if we look at this original Duke offer, you'll see that they were awarded $12,625. And believe it or not, the family was actually excited because they just really wanted Jade to go to Duke. And they were willing to beg. This wasn't a wealthy family, you know, they were, but they were willing to beg, borrow, and steal for her to go there. So they looked at it as, oh, this is awesome. Duke gave us $12,625 to go. That's amazing. And we said, well, hold up. It's not really amazing because Duke should have given you more based on their uh, history of what they give out, based on Jade, based on the family. We're going to appeal this. So we appealed the offer for them. And as you see on the revised offer, they were given uh, $51,975 increase. They upped their award to $64,600. That family was obviously very thrilled. That's $200,000 that they saved through that appeal. Okay, so obviously, now that was our biggest appeal ever, so I don't want you to think that it's very normal to get $50,000 increases from an appeal, but there is always more to ask for. And I want to, before I go into that, I want to talk about financial aid leveraging. And financial aid leveraging is a process that schools will use, and I I, I briefly touched on this before, but it's a process that schools will use where they'll, they'll try to figure out the least amount of money they need to give a particular student to still get that student to enroll in their school. So let me give you an example. Let's say Jimmy, I keep using the name Jimmy, so we're going to stick with Jimmy. Jimmy, his whole life, he only wanted to go to Ohio State, which is fine, 
right? Jimmy only wanted to go to Ohio State. The time comes. He's, he's now applying. The only school he puts on the FAFSA is Ohio State. Ohio State gets it. And they see that, you know, Jimmy's eligible for $10,000 in aid. But they say, you know what? I bet if we give him 1500 bucks, he's still coming here. And that's going to leave us $8,500, uh, you know, to put in the coffers to give to someone else who's maybe on the fence. Or maybe we could come in under budget this year on, a, on our aid, right? So, Rule number one is you never, ever, ever want to put down just one school on the FAF. So you always want to put down at least two or three that are rated somewhat equally. So at least the, at least the schools think that you're considering other schools. You don't want to just, you you know, otherwise you're basically saying like, hi, you know, no matter what you give me, I'm going to go here. So what can you give me? You know, how is that for negotiating? That's like walking into a car dealership and saying like, yeah, I'm definitely buying this exact car. So tell me what, um, what I have to pay to, to get it. So you never want to do that. You have the power to ask for more, but you, got to do it in the right way, okay? You got to do it in the right way to not offend the school and to actually increase the chances of the school listening to your story and giving you more money. So many families will, you know, A, families don't even know that they can appeal, but the ones that do, they write a 10-page dissertation that the school doesn't even read, or they just, you know, they send something that the school, that doesn't really solidify their point on why they should get more. So our average successful appeal results in an additional $4,809 per year in college aid. But I hope that you don't get underawarded and you don't even need to deal with this process. But if you do, you absolutely want to know what you're what you're doing as you're going through it so that you do have a higher likelihood of increasing your offer from the school all right so that was secret number five and I'm going to show you what I consider to be the most important secret of all in just a minute but first I want to do a real quick recap so now we know that your student must become truly self-aware of their uniqueness they have to find the right fit college and right fit major in order to increase their overall college experience get in and out in four years, be happy post-college and and save you a lot of money, right? They have to learn how to make themselves stand out to a school and increase their chance of getting in and maximizing the offer. You have to master the inner workings of how the money game is played and you need to know how and what to ask for. So how did Kim, this is a single mom we worked with, she was completely overwhelmed by this entire process. She didn't know what to do and when. How did she end up eliminating a large majority of the stress in the college planning process and get outstanding results for all of her children? And that comes down to secret number six, which I think is the most powerful secret, which is invest in a mentor. Now, why a mentor? College is one of the single largest financial and emotional expenditures you're ever going to make in your lifetime. So you don't want to be penny wise and pound foolish about it. A mentor really provides you with three things. So number one is outside guidance from someone who's done what you want to do, right? Number two is a time-tested process that generates success that does what you want it to do that all you have to do is plug into it. And number three is accountability, accountability for the student and accountability for the parent. And just think, even in this short training, you've learned new things that you would not know. And that's because with anything we're not experts at, we just don't know what we don't know. That's just the reality of things. Now, this is from a client of ours, Sheila. She said that my family and I have been extremely pleased with the many resources and attention we've received from the College Planning Network. We found ourselves inundated with the college application for our daughter's first year of college. CPN is the ideal solution of professional experts filled with the knowledge and guidance we lacked. It's so reassuring knowing these professionals are there for us every step of the way throughout this venture. Our greatest appreciations and highest recommendations to anyone who is going through the same experience. CPN is an invaluable wealth of resources, making certain you and your child are benefiting in every possible way towards their future education. There's so much the average person does not know about the college tuition process and how you can achieve the most for your family. We sing their praises and are so happy to have found them through a free college workshop. Every parent should seek the professional assistance of CPN to maximize their family's college possibilities. You will benefit in more ways than you can imagine. We certainly have. Now, what's the big mistake that people make, right? What most people do is they forgo a cohesive process. They either choose to wing it and do it on their own, which you're absolutely entitled to do, but which we now know after watching this training is not the way to go if you truly want to maximize your your student's college experience and save yourself a lot of money. Or what they do is they piecemeal it, right? They myopically look at college planning. So they'll buy an SAT prep course to get help with SATs. Or maybe they hire a tutor to help with an admission essay. Or maybe they pay their CPA to do their forms for them. But thankfully, there is a much better way to go about this. The best way is that, you know, when you think of it, most other people offering help do not look at this from a holistic perspective. There's just 
far too many chances for massive mistakes and huge sums of money to be lost by doing it alone or trying to piecemeal it. It's far too overwhelming and costly of a process to navigate without someone overseeing and helping with the whole process, the whole enchilada because there's just too much to lose by not doing that. Our unique approach focuses on both the student and the parent so that no one ends up losing this game. So our unique proposition is to help you select and help get your student into the right fit college, pick the right fit major, graduate on time, minimize your out-of-pocket costs, and make sure this doesn't completely derail your lifestyle and future. Now, if you didn't know, we are the comprehensive nationwide one-stop solution. We have full-time staff, counselors from the National Association of college admission counseling, client concierges, help desks, financial aid experts, appeal experts, and access to some of the best trained advisors who specialize in college funding and beyond. We are known as the solution used by hundreds of college planners and their clients nationwide with an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Now, today I promised you two things at the beginning. I said, number one, I promised you an education of the pitfalls that so many families fall victim to, which cause students to be miserable in college, take five to six years to graduate, and cost parents tens of thousands of dollars more than necessary. And number two, I promised you a proven solution on how to avoid these devastating pitfalls so that you could have a successful college planning journey, one where your student picks the right fit school, the right fit major, everyone's happy, they increase their chance of getting in, and saves you tens of thousands of dollars off the retail price of college. So again, just a quick recap of how to win the college game. Number one, your student must become truly self-aware of their uniqueness. They have to find the right fit college and the right fit major. They have to learn to make themselves stand out to a school to increase their chances of getting in and maximizing the money you get from the school. You must master the inner workings of how the college money game is played. You need to know how and what to ask for. And if you truly want to maximize your success in this process and save a boatload of money, time, and headaches, you have to invest in a mentor. So you have two choices, basically when it comes to your future and your child's future. Number one is you could wing it, you could cross your fingers, you could hope for the best, which is what a lot of people do, and that's why kids take 5.8 years, they're unhappy, they end up in jobs they don't like, and the parents go into tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt to, to do that. Or two, you can use an expert to guide you with a tested, proven system for success. So here's our offer to you. We've opened up our calendar and we've set aside some time over the next week to speak to you about your specific situation on how we can apply everything we talked about on this training to your family's college planning journey starting today. So on your college discovery session, we'll discuss step by step how we can take you from where you're at today to where you ultimately want to end up in the college planning process and how to save yourself a ton of time, money, and headaches along the way. But why are we doing this? So our company's mission is to help students get the education of their dreams and live happy, confident lives post-college while making paying for it more easily affordable. That's why we do what we do, but we could only do that for families who are open and are willing to receive our help. And for those that are, we will teach you the exact same admissions, funding, and financial aid strategies that we've used for years to help families successfully navigate the college planning process, pick the right fit school, the right fit major, increase their chance of getting in, and save thousands and thousands of dollars off the retail price of college. So what is the investment? Well, normally this session costs $250. However, because you took the time to attend this training, we're going to waive that fee. So the investment to you, if you take action during this call and schedule your college discovery session, is free. We waive that fee. You pay absolutely nothing. However, if you do wait till after this training call, it is $250. If you want to come back six months from now and have that, and have that uh, college discovery session, that's totally fine. But there is a $250 fee to do it. Um, as long as you book it um, you know, after, after this training, then, then there, we do waive that fee. Now, let me just go over who this is for, because this isn't for everyone, right? So who this is for is families that are coachable and they're open to receiving help. Families that look at things from a return on investment perspective and not just as a cost of, or, or an expense. So, you know, if, if I spend $10 and get back 500 that was an amazing return on investment. It wasn't a $10 cost, right? So families who look at things from a return on investment perspective. Families that are serious about their students' education and they're serious about getting them into the right fit school for them and picking the right fit major. Families that are open and willing to partner with an expert and have them take a lot of the emotional and financial stress 
stress off their plate. And if that's you, then definitely book your college discovery session right now, okay? Who should be on that call? All family members, parents, children, animals, whoever's involved in the, in the decision about college is ideally who we want on that call because you want to get everyone engaged in this process. Anyone who is involved in the process at least should be engaged in the process. You know, if, 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 if it's absolutely impossible to get everyone on, then, you know, fine, we'll, we'll, we'll try to accommodate that. But ideally, all family members involved in this process should be on that call. So, who is this not for though, right? Because it's not for everyone. So if you're a family with a very late stage senior in high school, you've already picked your major, you've picked the schools, you've completed your financial aid forms, you've gotten offers, and all you're looking for is to see in the 12th hour if there's a Hail Mary, this is not for you. If your student's not coachable, this is not for you. Now, I want you to think about that one because your student may not be coachable or you may think they're not coachable because they're not engaged in the process and they're not engaged in the process because this hasn't been about them yet, about what they truly, truly want. So, you know, if that's them, this, this still, you know, definitely would work for them. But if they're just completely checked out, they want nothing to do with this, then this probably is not for you. If your student has less than a 3.0 GPA, you know, if they're hovering on that, uh, you know, they're, they're, I think it's still worth us talking. But if, you know, if they have a 1.5 and they're thinking about dropping out of high school, then this, pro- this again, is probably not for you. Um, families who only look at cost and expense and don't understand return on investment. So before, when I use that $10 example, they don't see the $10 turning into $500. All they see is it cost me $10. So if you're that type of family that just looks at things from an expense standpoint, um, then again, this probably isn't going to be a fit for you, which is totally fine, but it's probably not going to be a fit. Or if you're a do-it-yourself type that would never, ever, ever think of spending money having someone coach their family through the college planning process, again, totally cool. Everyone's different, but this, again, is not for you. Now, again, as long as you meet the criteria of who this is for, then definitely click the Book Your College Discovery Session button right now as time slots are limited, and let's just explore if we're a good fit. This is 100% absent of any pressure. We only offer to work with the families that we know we can make a major impact on their situation. We're not gonna offer our services to someone that we don't feel they're a fit for. We're extremely candid and upfront. If we could help someone, we're gonna tell them. And if we can't help someone, we're gonna tell them that too. So, you know, again, 100% absent of any kind of pressure. Time slots are given on a first come, first serve basis. So again, don't procrastinate on this. And again, to give you that little push to take action with this. If you book your college discovery session during this training, we waive that $250 fee. And again, we do that because we know what happens otherwise. Life gets in the way, you put it off and you never get around to it or you get around to it six months later and you know it's six months that we can't do what needs to get done. So you know we, we, we waive that fee as long as you schedule that right away and let's explore you know, your family situation and see if there's a fit there and see if, if we could apply these strategies we talked about on today's call. I just wanted to read a a testimony from a client of ours, Robert. He said that CPN has been an extremely valuable partner and asset. I highly recommend them to any family and student as they begin their journey. Not only did CPN execute the tactical steps, but the advice and counsel at every turn was priceless. With their help, my son will be graduating from Savannah College of Art and Design, the Harvard of Art Schools. All doors to his future are wide open. And Heather... Heather said, in my daughter's junior year of high school, I had learned about College Planning Network. It sounded way too good to be true. After researching CPN, I had a 50-50 chance to take and knew that if I didn't take it and this company would have helped me, I would be kicking myself every day for the rest of my life. So I took a chance, and even though the initial amount of money to start off was high, being a single parent, what price could I put on helping my daughter's future? I am so thankful and grateful that I took the chance with CPN. My money was well spent with CPN, and I highly recommend it to everyone. Thank you, CPN, for the best four years. I hope that you will someday carry over to graduate students. Hint, hint. So in closing, this single decision could be the difference between a successful future for your child versus just becoming another cog in the wheel like so many other unhappy people unfortunately are. You know, so many people go through this process the wrong way. So again, you know, it is that serious of a decision. One little mistake can cost you thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars you could have otherwise gotten. And you have to ask yourself and be honest, if you really want to handle this all on your own to try to save a couple of dollars and deal with the stress, anxiety, and overwhelm of all of this, and most likely overpay by many, many, many multiples of what our service costs, 
or partner with an expert to help guide you through this and eliminate all of that stress, anxiety, overwhelm, knowing that you're doing everything you can for your family's success in your process. So again, click the book your college discovery session button right now and we look forward to talking to your family. Take care.